Uh, good afternoon, and thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm Pat Foy, Executive Director of the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. Less than a year ago, Governor Cuomo and Vice President Biden announced a plan to redevelop LaGuardia Airport. Today, just hours ago, the Port Authority and LaGuardia Gateway Partners signed a 35-year lease to build a 21st century terminal at LaGuardia and also completed a successful closing of over $2.4 billion of tax-exempt financing for the new terminal. That financing was oversubscribed nearly 10 times. That huge demand helped keep interest rates low. Today's announcement represents the first step in the governor's plan to modernize and remake the entirety of LaGuardia Airport. Today's closing also represents the largest public-private partnership in the history of the United States. A word about the current LaGuardia. The original LaGuardia Central Terminal Building was built in 1964, over 50 years ago, and had a capacity of about 8 million passengers, and was built before the modern age of jet travel. Last year, the facility handled over 14 million passengers and has well outlived its useful life. Replacement of the current terminal has been discussed and debated for literally over a decade, but without concrete action. As those of you who have traveled through the Central Terminal Building know, the current facility did not envision the post-9-11 reality of security screening and customers wanting to buy food, beverages, and goods past security. The existing 800,000 square foot terminal will be replaced by a modern 1.2 million square foot terminal with 35 gates, the same number as the current facility, but designed to handle today's aircraft. The design and operating plan that LGP, LaGuardia Gateway Partners, developed will provide for modern passenger amenities, state-of-the-art technology, and additional space for security screening, retail, and check-in. The amount, importantly, the amount of airside real estate created by LGP's design will increase LaGuardia airside real estate by about 40 percent or approximately 20 acres, which will increase the throughput of the entire airport. A word about construction. Initial demolition will start this week. The first passenger concourse will be completed in the summer of 2018, about two years from now. The head house, the industry's jargon for a new terminal building will be completed in the first quarter of 2020, and gates in the second concourse will open in August 2020. Finally, today's lease execution and financial close represent the first steps toward the governor's vision of rebuilding the entirety of LaGuardia. We'll hear from Ken Henry Kuykendall from Delta Airlines in a moment about Delta's plans for its terminal. The Port Authority and the MTA have been working hard together on design and alignment of an air train from Midtown Manhattan, addressing a gap in public transportation in LaGuardia that is over 50 years old. I thank the governor for his vision, thank Port Authority Chairman John Degnan, Steve Cohn, and Scott Reckler, and the entire Port Authority Board for their support, and thank LGP and its partners, Vantage Airport Group, Meridium, and Skanska Infrastructure, for investing their capital and taking on the challenge of delivery and operation of this critical project. With that, I'll turn it over to George Casey, Chairman of the Board, LaGuardia Gateway Partners. George. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Governor, and good afternoon. As the private sector partner in this public-private partnership, it is a tremendous honor to stand before you all today in marking this critical milestone for LaGuardia Airport. My partners at LaGuardia Gateway Partners began this process nearly three years ago when the Port Authority issued an RFP to replace just LaGuardia's central terminal building. That project was a challenge by itself, but the governor pushed us and the Port Authority to think bigger and to think just beyond one terminal, think about the entire airport. Today is a big step forward in meeting the governor's vision for a single, unified LaGuardia airport. With the Port Authority, LaGuardia Gateway Partners, and the State of New York working together, this is a true public-private partnership on a $4 billion project, two-thirds of which is financed by the private sector and existing passenger fees. The beneficiaries of this groundbreaking project will be the over 14 million passengers that pass through the terminal every year and our airline partners who have been instrumental in bringing this project to reality. Thanks to the governor's leadership and the vision in delivering big projects such as this, we at LaGuardia Gateway Partners are incredibly proud to oversee the construction and operation of the new Terminal B and new Central Hall. With today's financial close on over $2.4 billion in bonds 
and the signing of the lease agreement that turns over the operation of LaGuardia's Terminal B from the Port Authority to LGP, we are on our way to beginning construction of the largest public-private partnership in the United States. I want to thank Pat Foy, John Degnan, and the Board of Commissioners at the Port Authority, and thank you, Governor, for your vision for a new LaGuardia Airport. I will now introduce Henry Kuykendall from Delta Airlines. Good afternoon. Congratulations to the governor on this, this important milestone in the redevelopment of LaGuardia Airport. Delta continues to be committed to the governor's vision of rebuilding our terminals at LaGuardia. This redesign aligns with our continued investment in New York and our ongoing commitment to providing an exceptional experience for New Yorkers. We are in advanced discussions with the Port Authority and plan to move in parallel with LaGuardia Gateway Partners on this important project for New Yorkers. And now, it is my distinct honor to introduce Governor Cuomo from the State of New York. Thank you. Thank you, and good afternoon. And I think these gentlemen and the teams that have worked with them deserve a round of applause because this is a really big deal. So great job. This is an exciting day, long time in coming. A lot of hard work uh, went into getting us to this uh, point, but we will actually be uh, starting construction on a new LaGuardia Airport, an entirely new LaGuardia Airport uh, that is long overdue and is essential for New York. Airports are not what they were at one time, right? Uh, big business for this state is tourism, Airports are essential. Commerce, airports are essential. Uh, just uh, for convenience of citizens, airports are essential. And if you look at the airports around the world, it's clear that uh, New York has been left behind. That many of the other great international airports are better, more sophisticated than the New York airports. And LaGuardia and Kennedy are the front door for New York to the world. Um, and uh, LaGuardia especially, Kennedy needs improvement, and we're working on that, but LaGuardia especially uh, has been unacceptable for a very long period of time. Uh, Vice President Biden, God bless him, has a way of uh, speaking frankly, and he made that point when he said, if you were blindfolded and you landed in LaGuardia, you would think you landed in a third world country. Uh, not the uh, most uh, tactful statement, but he made the point. Uh, and he's right. And anyone who's been using LaGuardia for the past uh, 10, 20 years knows that uh, it's not what it needs to be. And it's certainly not of New York quality. Uh, so the plan was, let's do it right. Let's do it ground up. Let's build a whole new airport. We're not rebuilding what was. We're not repairing what was. This is virtually blank slate building new. Uh, and uh, it is a really, uh, it's overdue, but it's also an exciting, exciting opportunity. So Pat Foy, the executive director, has done a magnificent job uh, shepherding it through. The chairman, John Degnan of the Port Authority, uh, LGP Partners, Delta Airlines, Rick Cotton, Dan Tishman, so many people who worked long and hard to get us here today. Uh, why hadn't we done it before? Well, it's hard to build an airport, you know. It is uh, expensive, it's complicated, it's technical. This is going to be the first new airport since the Denver airport 20 years ago. Uh, so it is difficult. Um, and um, I think, especially in New York, somewhere over the past couple of decades, uh, New York lost part of its governmental ambition, right? This is a public sector job. This is a public sector project. We're doing it in partnership, so it's a public-private sector partnership. Uh, as Pat mentioned, the largest in the country. But it's complicated, it's tough, and uh, we lost our appetite for big, complicated, uh, difficult public works. Uh, 
uh, I've been working very hard to regain that ambition. Because you need to. You need to continue to build and grow, otherwise other places will pass you by. You look at New York. What makes New York New York? We always did the impossible. We always did the first. We always did the ambitious. We were always a step ahead. And there was nothing that we couldn't do. That was our attitude. That's the New York ethic. That's the New York way. Some people call it the New York arrogance. But we made the greatest city, the greatest state on the planet. And we have to keep that energy and that positivism. And rebuilding infrastructure and staying ahead of the curve on infrastructure is essential. Airports, trains, roads and bridges. And we're doing that all across the board. LaGuardia Airport, we're having, working now on a redesign of Kennedy Airport. We're working on a new Penn Station, Penn Farley complex. We're working on adding a third rail to the Long Island Railroad coming in from uh, Long Island, east side access, large scale capital projects to make sure New York stays New York. And New York leads the other states, the other countries in making sure we have the state of the art facility. Uh, again, I know how long and hard uh, these gentlemen have worked, and now the work really just begins, I want you to know. Uh, the shovel will literally go into the ground, and we're going to do a ceremonial groundbreaking to celebrate the moment. But uh, it's exciting, and it's a new day for New York. As a uh, Queens boy, born and raised, it gives me a special pleasure that uh, Queens is going to get a new airport. But this is really New York State's airport. Uh, and this is going to be state of the art. It's going to be better than anything else out there. Uh, and it's going to be the airport that New York State deserves. So well done. Congratulations to all. Thank you. As the governor said, this is a big deal. Actually, Governor, if the vice president were here, he might add an adjective to that description, but I'm not going to go there. And with that, uh, happy to take questions. So, Rich, a uh, ceremonial groundbreaking will be scheduled at a date to be announced. Uh, as I said, initial demolition is going to begin this week. Uh, LGP has been prepared for this moment for a long period of time and working with the, uh, the Port Authority term in, uh, team, initial demolition is going to start this week. Rich, follow up. Just, just in yeah, exactly. One of the things, good question, Rich, one of the things that makes this project challenging and frankly one of the reasons why LGP was selected in a robust uh, RFP competition one, for a long period of time was because they were best able to deal with the reality that the project's got to get built, it's got to built, get built quickly and get done well, but that the airport has to continue. And the 14 million passengers that go through the central terminal building and the other uh, Delta and the Marine Air Terminal at LaGuardia have to continue to be serviced. Uh, so yes, the, the airport's going to continue to operate. This is LaGuardia. We can't shut it down. Next. Yes, sir. Please. Yeah, look, I, I think the true cost of the project is $4 billion. Uh, I, I think if you were to go back to 1990 and 1980 and 1970 and look at other amounts that were invested over years and decades in LaGuardia, and that's true with respect to, frankly, every Port Authority facility and indeed every, every governmental facility in the state and in the nation, the cost of the project is $4 billion. And as George Casey noted, two-thirds of that is going to be paid for with private capital, including $200 million uh, equity investment by LGP. Next. So, Kate, a couple of things. Obviously, Delta is not part of this the central terminal building uh, transaction that we're announcing today. Henry spoke about Delta's plans for constructing a new terminal in parallel with the, uh, with, uh, the central terminal building being built by uh, LGP. 
the, the reason why this was pursued as a public-private partnership were a couple of reasons. One is having a couple of hundred million dollar private investment in the transaction obviously makes sure that the people putting that capital up are committed they can do it. Uh, one, two, we successfully closed, LGP successfully closed one of the largest public-private tax-exempt financing offerings a couple of weeks ago. Uh, extraordinary uh, interest in that. Third is one of the things that the Port Authority and the Port Authority Board did in pursuing this transaction was to shift the risk of construction of a very complex project from the Port Authority and the public sector to the private sector. We have a couple of things. One is a maximum gross construction price from Skanska Wall. Skanska is a AAA credit. They've guaranteed that if uh, they're wrong about the cost of construction, that's on their account. It's not on the public's or the port authorities. Those are among the advantages that we saw in pursuing this as a P3. Next. Rich again. Uh, great question. As the governor noted, uh, the borough of Queens is the homes of both uh, JFK and LaGuardia. In aggregate, about 500,000 direct and indirect jobs come from uh, JFK uh, and LaGuardia. There will be tens of thousands of jobs coming out of the construction project and an equal amount generated by the uh, uh, new modernized LaGuardia. Yes? Well, in Queens, that's not a dog leg, it's a U-turn. Uh, so a, a, a couple of things. Uh, when the governor and v Vice President Biden spoke uh, about a year ago, July of 2015, the governor and the vice president talked about the importance of the air train. So just last week, the MTA uh, issued contracts for about $7.5 million for preliminary design and engineering for the, uh, uh, for the air train. We at the Port Authority, my colleague Patty Clark is here, have been working with her colleagues and our colleagues at the MTA. Tom Prendergast and I have met with the governor and the governor's staff on the air train a number of times. It is a, it is a first order priority. One of the gaps in LaGuardia over the last 40, 50 years has been the absence of a public transportation link from, uh, uh, from Midtown Manhattan to, to the airport. Frankly, we think that the people who ride the air train will be the same people who ride the air train at Heathrow today at JFK, today, today at Newark Airport. Airport employees to be sure, but travelers uh, who don't want to, for instance, get caught on traffic on the Van Wick in the case of uh, uh, in the case of JFK or the Grand Central in the case of LaGuardia, people who are concerned about uh, traffic congestion, etc. Business people traveling to the airport. We expect millions of people will take air train LaGuardia. Yes, sir. Well, look, I, I'm not going to uh, get out in front of that. I can tell you that as recently, we're, we're meeting with Delta on a, on a regular basis. Uh, the uh, CFO of Delta uh, is personally engaged. It's a major priority of uh, the Port Authority and Delta both. And uh, uh, it is being the project, and I think Henry will agree, the project is being worked hard and uh, frequently, literally on a daily basis. Anybody else? Rich? So, Rich, better than a word picture, what we'll do is we'll give you, we'll give the press, and I think we can do this, Melissa, we'll give you images when, uh, when this is over. Some of you may have seen, some not. But uh, no one is, the, unfortunately, the vice president's characterization of the central terminal building at LaGuardia is sadly true. Uh, no one is proud of it. Certainly, as the executive director of the Port Authority, I'm not proud of it. And what we're going to be providing is an architecturally consistent airport across all the terminals, uh, ultimately public transportation from Midtown Manhattan and a 21st century facility in its look, in its feel, in its technology, and in its customer amenities. That's the goal and that's what we expect LGP uh, will deliver on. Anybody else? Governor. The, uh, just a couple of points to follow up. Uh, Rich, to your question, the airport now is not really a single airport, right? Uh, it is a series of terminals. Terminal A, Terminal B, Terminal C. Uh, so fundamentally, it is being transformed into, as Pat said, a world-class airport. But first of all, it's a unified airport. You can see in the 
in the picture how different it is. It's going to be one unified airport, LGP partners developing part of it, Delta developing part of it. The Delta development will be in parallel from a construction point of view with LGP. Uh, and you'll have Delta on one side, LGP on the other side. But it will be one unified airport. It is also moved up dramatically uh, towards the Grand Central Parkway, closer to the Grand Central Parkway, which increases the flight operating space uh, by about 200 percent, over 200 percent. So it will be a more functional airport, uh, more customer uh, amenities, possibility of a hotel, retail, shopping, and then the accelerated transportation. The, the air train is important because we have to get out of cars in this metropolitan area. If you want to see this region grow, it can't be based on more vehicle transportation. It's going to be, need to be based on an advanced mass transportation system. Uh, and we have to be able to say to people, you can come in, for, get in from LaGuardia easily uh, by train. Uh, and that's the point of the air train. As far as the P3 question, um, I think the P3 that's designed here in some ways, the public-private sector partnership, is the best of both worlds. The Port Authority manages the process. The Port Authority uh, uh, makes sure that the public considerations are met, but the private sector, the private sector actually builds and operates. Uh, I think it's very important in life to know what you don't know, right? Uh, government does not uh, build well. They are not expert at construction. Let me just say that to be kind. It's a separate expertise, especially building an airport, building in New York City, building a complicated structure. Uh, there are people who do this. There are people who do it for a living. There are people who do it better. The, the optimum is an arrangement where the public needs are met by a public agency, but the construction, the operation, is left to the private sector. Uh, we've been deploying this methodology throughout. It's what we're doing on the Tappan Zee Bridge, which is working extraordinarily well. Uh, so the days where you see a government agency with a shovel in its hand uh, and driving a backhoe, you know, those days should be over as far as I'm concerned, Rich. Uh, and uh, one final point. This is a Port Authority project, Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. Uh, I want to thank uh, Governor Christie for his cooperation uh, and his assistance in making this project happen. We've had a good relationship at the port, uh, and it's been a mutually beneficial relationship for New York and New Jersey and for the entire Northeast region. Uh, so I want to thank him for his cooperation. And it's easier to say nice things about him when he's not here, so I thought I would take the opportunity. Yeah, we'll do off topic afterwards, but just any other. Given that so much of your infrastructure and, and economic development agenda is on the subject of a federal probe, uh, what sort of anxiety do you have that this project is less like it uh, could prompt more questions both from the public and from the U.S. Attorney? Look, I think any time you do a procurement, people can second guess it, right? Uh, but. The, uh, we know how to procure contracts. We know how to procure contracts in ways that have uh, safeguards and disclosure and transparency. Uh, and it has to be done right. And that's what the port will do. Sir? I think that's something the Port Authority has to consider. The per perimeter rule you're speaking? Right. Right. Yeah. I'd like to see what the port's analysis says first. The air train is a joint effort, but primarily by the MTA. Well, there will be a division between the MTA and the port. Yes.
Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions on LaGuardia? Seeing not, yes, sir. Yeah, sure. The, the bond offering that uh, was priced a couple of weeks ago and that closed today was uh, uh, $2.5 billion, uh, approximate no, uh, number. LGP also invested a couple hundred do uh, million dollars of equity, and the Port Authority put uh, passenger facility charges subject to approval of the FAA, I'll note, uh, into the project as well. All right, good. Thank you all. Good.